Now, there's another kind of chart that's really similar to line chart called uh, area chart. And this is what it looks like. It just fills in the area under the line of a line chart. And the API for this is very similar to the API for making lines with D3. In instead of d3.svg.line, it's d3.svg.area. And the documentation is really good for all of these. So let's take a look at this example. Um, again, I'm using an SVG path element, appending a single path element to the SVG group and giving it a class of, of chart-area so we could style it if we wanted to. And then here, we set up the d3.svg.area instance, which, just like the d3.svg.line thing, it will generate an SVG path string that we can pass into the D attribute of the path element. When we set the X accessor, this is the X position, which goes from left to right, and it's, it's year. And this is, this is the same as in the line example. And in the line example, the, there was a Y accessor, which goes up and down. And so this is it's very similar to the X accessor. You know, it, it accesses the the Y column value for each row and passes that through the Y scale. But instead of just Y with area, there's Y0 and Y1. And Y0 here is the bottom of this shape, and Y1 represents the top of this shape. And so for Y0 here, we're just passing an inner height. And inner height, remember, is the distance between this point and this point. And remember, the, the coordinate system in pixels, you know, a y value of 0 is actually at the top. And then a y value of the height is at the bottom. And this group element is transformed by the margin left and the margin top. And then the inner width and inner height is computed by, you know, subtracting the margin from the outer width and outer height, which is the size of this outer box. So that's why we pass in inner height for y0 to make this shape stop at the bottom of this rectangle. So that's how we set up the area uh, instance and then here just like the line chart uh, we just call it with the data and remember this is this is data for the whole world so there's just the year and the population. So this is how you can use the D3SVG area API to make areas, area charts. Similarly to a line chart, if you have another dimension of data, you can use this kind of representation uh, to visualize that. And so here's what that looks like. Uh, it's called a stacked area chart. And now each uh, slice or each like slab of this structure represents one country, the population for one country. The difference, be the biggest difference, I think, between this and the line chart with multiple lines is that here, it's actually stacked. So, you know, the shape here for China, it depends on the shapes for all the other countries because it has to be above them. You know, it's like the sum of the values for all the previous countries, all the all the countries below it. And so this is this uses d3 dot layout dot stack uses the d3 stack layout, which was also used for the stacked uh, bar chart example. And I realized there was a missing example going from here to here, which is showing the output of the d3 dot stack. And so I made one over here uh, with. Block Builder, which is a really cool tool that lets you edit blocks in the browser and save them. So here's the gist of what we're going to do to make a stacked area chart. We're going to use d3.nest just like before, but this time it's, it's called area column. It's just a different name. This is country. And then this is the new part. We're going we're gonna to pass this nested data structure into stack. And what is stack? Well, okay, it's an in instance of d3.layout.stack, which has the y accessor returning the value for the y column, which is population. And then values returns uh, d.values. 
So this is an accessor for um, the values. It's just part part of the API, and it sort of it looks like it seems to me like it was really designed to work with d3.nest really well. Uh, but if you if you use the stack layout with things other than d3.nest, uh, you could you could change this, you know, so it's something different. So after we pass this nested data structure through the stack layout, this li this just prints it as JSON, and so we can inspect what it looks like. So this is what we get. It's very similar to the result from d3.nest, but <coughs> Now there's these new values that have been added. There's y0 and y here. So see, for the first one, y0 is 0, and y is the same value as population. But for the next one, uh, well, actually, no. So here's how d3layout.stack works. For all the values in the first entry of the top-level array, that's the first slab. Okay, so y0 is always going to be 0 for all the entries for China, say, because China happens to be first. It just happens to be on the bottom. But if we scroll down here, the next country, India, see the y0 value is 5441, which is the population of China in 1950. So it takes the value from the previous uh, country, and, and that's the starting point for this next country. Y here is the same value as population. And so when we compute the actual Y position, we're going to have to take Y0 and add Y to it to compute the top of the this, of this slice. So the bottom of the slice, we can use Y0. And for the top of the slice, we can use Y. And I guess we could have just used population directly. I just didn't think about that. Here's all of that in action in an actual stacked area chart. So here we're setting up the stack where the y accessor will be just d at the y column, which is population. Values is d.values, just like that example that I just showed. Here we're setting up the, the area, the thing that constructs the area path. So x is the same as before, which is just the year. And then, but y0 and y1 are different from the single, single area chart. Um, y0 is the y0 value from the stack layout passed through the y scale. This is the bottom of each of these slices. And then y1, which is the top of each of the slices, is the y scale of the y0 value plus the y value. And actually, you know, this could have been written like this, I think. Yeah, that would also work. Yeah, I just didn't realize it before. But that's what it's doing. It's taking the y0 value, which is computed by the stack layout, and adding the actual value here for the country. And then, similar to the line chart with multiple lines, we're doing almost the same thing, where we're setting up one path per top-level object, you know, per country. And then setting, we're setting the D attribute of each of those to be this area evaluated with d.values. So this constructs, so this gets called once for each country. It constructs the slab for each country. And then we're setting the fill, which is a different way of setting the color. Remember, with a line, we were setting stroke because it has no fill, it has no area. But for shapes that have area, you can use fill to set the color. And if you set stroke, it'll set the outline color. And so we're just using the color scale of d.key, just like before. So this is how you can make a stacked area chart. And one trick you can do with this is you can expand it to fill the whole space which, you know, kind of shows you a different story. It shows you a different perspective on the data. So here, the area, like the, the height of each point in time represents the population of each country, right? So what can we see from this? Well, it looks like uh, all the populations are growing. That's pretty much all we can see. And China and India are much bigger 
than all the other countries. But if we, if we change it to fill the space, what do we see now? Well, it kind of looks like this green one is shrinking, right? The U.S. And so now we're seeing everything in terms of the percentage of the, f the total world population. And so we're, con we're seeing that as a percentage of the world population, it looks like, well, it looks like China is actually decreasing too. Uh, and the U.S. is also. And India looks like it's expanding. And if we go back to the line chart for each country, we can see that the top one is China and the second one is India. And you see this change in the slope right here around 1990? I, I noticed that. I'm like, what is that? And it it turns... Yeah, it turns out that's when they implement. They started, uh, yeah. So that looks like the effect of that one-child policy. And so you can see now, India has continued growing at like almost the exact same rate, but looks like China kind of slowed down. But anyway, um, how do you do this expanded stacked area variant? Uh, this is what the code looks like. It's just a one-line change. So this uh, stack layout has another uh, function on it called offset. And if you pass in expand to offset, this is what you get. It fills the space. And if you pass a different value called wiggle to this, you'll get this visualization, a stream graph, <laughs> which is super cool. I mean and you can animate it. Hmm? It's generating new random data and then doing a transition. Yeah. And so this is cool for certain kinds of data, uh, like things that vary over time. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but the, I think the original use of StreamGraph was this one here. It was published in a very high visibility article where each one of these is a movie. So here's like Transformers. And you can see that like as soon as it was released, it was like hugely popular. Let's see if I can zoom in. And then it kind of faded away. And they did some they did some cool tricks here with the ordering of the stack, such that like the newer ones appeared on the outer side of the stack. But this is basically you could you could do this with D3 using that wiggle option. Isn't that cool? So y these are all movies. You can see how they, they, they are, you know, they're really popular, and then they sort of fade into history, you know, into this big sort of river. So I love visualization because as soon as you visualize something that you never visualized before, even if you applied statistics or models to it, chances are you're going to see something new. And, like, that's why I think visualization is so cool, you know, so powerful. Here it is. Yeah. Minimizes the change in slope weighted by layer thickness. It came, oh, here it is. It came out of this paper, actually, that was presented a couple of years ago at the uh, IEEE Viz conference. Yeah, here's the academic paper about this. So I think he, Mike Bostock implemented this algorithm, which is now the wiggle option <laughs> of D3 stack. So here's one with films. He applied it to films, and then he applied it to his listening history on Last FM. You see, like, girl talk he was listening to and uh, something else. Well, I think that's, uh, that's all I've got for today. Thanks for coming out. Uh, you're welcome to hang around and talk, but I'll let you guys go. Yeah, thanks. <laughs>